2019 Advanced Higher Physics Exam from the SQA, Question 1. A spacecraft accelerates from rest at a time t equal to zero. The velocity v of the spacecraft at time t is given by the relationship v equals 4.2 t squared plus 1.6 t, where v is measured in metres per second and t is measured in seconds. Now, using calculus methods, we have to determine the time at which the acceleration of the spacecraft is 24 metres per second every second. Now, we know that the acceleration of any object is actually equal to the rate of change of its velocity, dv by dt. And we know what the function of v is. It's equal to d by dt, and we're given that as 4.2 t squared plus 1.6 t. So to find the acceleration at any particular time on that journey, we just have to find the derivative of that expression. So a will become the derivative of 4.2 t squared becomes 8.4 t and plus 1.6. That will be the derivative of the velocity, which is going to give us the acceleration. Now we know the value of the acceleration, the value of the acceleration is 24 and that's going to equal to 8.4t plus 1.6. Take the 24 and bring over the 1.6 and we're left with a small equation like this, 8.4t, 24 taking 1.6 is 22.4 that's going to equal to 8.4t. So just divide through by the 8.4 and we'll have that time. And the time comes out to be 2.6666, which we can rearrange to give us 2.7 seconds. Question 1, Part B. Determine the distance travelled by the spacecraft in this time. Well, we do know that the time of the travel is 2.7 seconds because we worked that out in the previous question. And we also know that the formula for the velocity in terms of time is equal to 4.2t squared plus 1.6t. 1.6t. Now, from our calculus, we know that the velocity of any object is equal to the rate of change of displacement s, ds by dt. So we can equate ds by dt equal to the formula above 4.2t squared plus 1.6t. So we concentrate on this part here. Uh, this part here, we can say that ds, if we cross multiply by the t, is equal to bracket 4.2t squared plus 1.6t, and that will be dt. And you can see now if we integrate up, so integrate ds, that will give us s, the displacement, which will be the distance travelled from zero equal to the integral of, and we know the limits from this, it's going to be 0 to 2.7 seconds, of 4.2t squared plus 1.6t, and that will be by dt. So we integrate that expression up and put in the limits, we should get the displacement travelled by the spacecraft from time t equal to 0. And since it's in a straight line then, that must be the distance gone. So let's do the integration then. S will be equal to, and we'll put square brackets now, 4.2t squared becomes 4.2 divided by 3, because we'll increase the power here, t to the power 3, plus 1.6 over 2t squared, standard integration there. And that's from 0 to 2.7 seconds. So we just plug in our numbers, s would be equal to, and keep the square bracket like that, it would be 4.2 over 3 t cubed, so we're going to have to multiply that by 2.7 cubed, plus 1.6 over 2 times 2.7 squared, 
and we know that's going to be the top limit. And we know subtracting the zero limit, the two t's is going to give us zero, so it's going to give us zero there. So all we have to do is work out that value in our calculator, just take our time, and we find out the displacement s is given as 33.4 metres, which we can say is equal to 33 metres to two significant figures. So to recap our calculus, which we have to know, we should know the following, that the velocity of an object is equal to the rate of change of displacement v equals ds by dt. And we also know that the acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity, so acceleration is dv by dt. So if we know the displacement of an object uh, as a function of time, then finding, finding the derivative of it will find the velocity of that object for any time. And likewise, if we know the function for the velocity of an object with respect to time, then by finding the derivative of it, we can find acceleration. And we also can work our way backwards now, because we know that s then will be equal to the integral of v with respect to dt. And we also know that the velocity, if we've got the acceleration, will be equal to the integral of the acceleration with respect to dt. So these are the things we have to know to deal with these type of questions in advanced higher. Mm -hmm.